And now let's talk about minefields. Minefields are very important in this game, but in the beginning they are kind of a double-edged sword. Uh, most races, there are some races have got their big carrier ships, and the other races have got cloak ships, and those races with the cloak ships can cause quite a nuisance to the carrier races in the beginning of the game. And for many races such as the Evil Empire, the only only way to protect themselves from the uh, cloakers is the minefields. Of course there are some tactics, yes, and you can trade for some anti-cloak technology, but mostly it's minefields. And the minefields are double-edged sword because uh, if you use a lot of m money and my resources to the minefields, you are going to lose. Because, as I've mentioned, the first 30 turns is the race to the ship limit and you should be building as good fleet as possible. So, all the money and minerals are away from, from the building ships. So before ship limit hits, you should not invest heavily into minefields. Instead, what I do is that I make cost-efficient torpedoes. I often make Mark IV tor photon torpedoes at first. I use the kind of ships that will have other uses as well. And I will use the friendly code, uh, friendly code, actually it's MD1 for laying 10 mines, or then I will lay a quarter if there's even less, let's say I've got 20 torpedoes, I can use this MD, MDQ friendly code and lay even smaller minefields everywhere. And the idea in the small minefields is that if there are enemy cloakers moving along your planets, they do have quite a good possibility to hit the minefields. And in the very early in the game, if the enemy wants to build a cloaker that has got good engines and attacks you with it, it most likely doesn't have good beams and it can't sweep those minefields. Also, the minesweep rate range for the minefields is 200 light years, so why you, uh, it's a good idea to make small minefields is that the enemy needs to come pretty close in order to see those minefields. And minefields are a very important psychological factor because there's always the one percent chance of hitting a mine. You will, they Many players don't want to risk that at all. So small minefields are good in the very early of the game and also later of the game. It's a good idea to lay very small minefields every now and then. But the problem with the small minefields is that you can make a lot of uh, turns to lay these small minefields and then the enemy comes and drops one very big minefield and it destroys all your little minefields away. So a good idea also could be that after uh, you have laid those small minefields and the, you have the enemy there, 
maybe after ship limit you could lay a very big minefield on top of those little minefields so there would be multiple protection of course when the minefields overlap they destroy each other one-on-one -on -one ratio starting from the lower level ids so it's very likely that the small minefields are first to go unless uh, somebody destroys those minefields and you are able to lay some new with the lower id it's a bit same thing as with as with other things in the planets then you can lay for example here there are privateer and lizard minefields you can lay uh, minefields on top of each other if you lay them in the name of your ally using the friendly code m i and the race number of the race you are going to use and then you can lay minefields inside another minefield like here a web mine field has been laid there if the center of uh, the minefield is closer to another center of a minefield than that one inside of which it is so that's how i've been able to make this small minefield over here a web field over here next to this one so with smaller with small minefields you are able to cover quite large area with a lot fewer resources because if you use low tech level torpedoes to lay mines then as you can see here the bigger better tech you have for the torpedo the more mines it makes the mark 8 photon torpedo is the best bang for the buck in mines so you should aim for mark 8 when laying mines but of course in the very early of the game it's often impossible it's a good thing to find a silicon planet and for example make a mine layer with bad engines that you tow around with your large deep space reactors while colonizing so you get the biggest minefields for the least amount of uh, resource uh, minerals as i mentioned the minerals are very important for shipbuilding so in the long run it's very important to be able to lay mines with mark 8 photons but of course it requires a lot of money and for that reason usually uh, you start to heavily lay mines in the end of the game when nobody is able to build more ships because of the ship limit and there's lack of combat so you try to get edge over an opponent by laying large minefields and that's one of a bunker buster tactic that i use often is that i load a torpedo ship or torpedo ships with a lot of uh, torpedoes and i attack the enemy quickly and lay a huge minefield or multiple huge minefields that will destroy all the enemy minefields at once and then i'm able to attack protecting myself of course if the enemy has their uh, enough sweeping power heavy phasers about 52 heavy phasers around there they are able to sweep all your mines which is very nasty thing and for that reason there's a good idea also to use the vga planets calculate calculator i often use this to calculate how many 
uh, beams I need to use in many situations. Uh, usually it doesn't matter what the game is like, the crystalline usually plays a strategically important role or then there are robots or then there are lizards or federation or something who are able to use a lot of resources to minefields and usually you are going to need heavy phasers, sweepers for mines sooner or later. So it's a good idea to plan from the beginning where and how you are going to build about 60 sweep uh, beam, heavy phaser beams that are able to be at one point of space uh, sweeping those mines. Even if you usually you need to do both mine sweeping and counter mining in the end of the game. And when you sweep, you need to be close enough to sweep. And when you sweep webs, you need to be. You don't need to go into the web. You can go just, for example, this is a good hex. If you move into this square where this border is slightly below the center, you can sweep this web, but you won't risk hitting it. When you can, you don't need to be so close to regular minefields to sweep them. And sweeping happens in ID order. So it's often if you, there's a huge minefield, you often need to have the highest ID ship in front and the lowest ID ship sweeping in the back. So you have the kind of a line that's able to sweep a whole new big minefield every turn. Okay, and then you can scoop your own mines by using the mine sweep and mine scoop. Uh, here you can shoot, put the mine sweep mission and use the mine scoop and you can scoop the torpedoes into your ship. And this is a good way to convert torpedoes. If you, for example, you have Mark 4 torpedoes and Mark 8 for torpedoes and you need to transfer torpedoes from ship to ship, you can set the other ship to lay mines and the other one can sweep those and scoop those on the same turn. And this is also uh, possible if you have one ship over here and one ship over there and the minefield is just so big you can send those torpedoes far away using this tactic. But again, in the end, I will uh, repeat myself. If you invest heavily to torpedoes and defenses in the beginning of the game, you cripple your own economics and shipbuilding, and you are most likely to lose. And this is one of the reasons why it's often very smart for the cloaking races to send a cloaker, even one ship, to harass a neighboring carrier race, because it forces them to spend resources to minefields. So they are, in that way, you are uh, destroying their ships because they will never be built before the ship limit. Okay, so that was the minefield lecture. See you next time.